Hey guys, how's it going? It's Al. DraftKings week three. The weekend is almost here. This is our Thursday video, our top stacks. We look at which quarterbacks we want to play with the stacked pass catchers on their teams. I got five of them for you and they are hot fire this week. Absolutely big time ceilings, big time floors, fantastic offensive environments. And we're going to try and dissect it all for you in just a moment. Thank you guys for being here. I appreciate you. If you're new to the channel and you just found it, we got to get uh, like a thousand likes on this video. So please click the like button, subscribe to the channel if you're new, or even if you're a returning viewer who's not subscribed, why are you not subscribed? Subscribe to the channel, ring the notifications bell, leave me a reply down below with a stack. If I don't mention a stack that you like this week for tournaments, drop it in the replies down below. Tell me why, why do you like that stack? It's fine. If you don't like the stacks, I say, you don't have to play them. It's real simple. I'm just telling you things that I like. You might like something different. There's tons of ways to get to the top of the GPP list and to win all of the money. So make sure that you trust your own decisions, get yourself there. These are gonna be my top five. And if you really wanna join the discussion with the entire Smiz gang, click that join button right below the screen. It's like right over there. Become a channel member on YouTube and you get access in the Discord to every single member of our community, all the subscribers on Twitch, all the, sub the channel members here on YouTube, all convene all day long. So when you're not watching one of these videos, you can have somebody to bounce daily fantasy strategy or plays off of anytime during the day. 5,000 plus members strong, partner Discord, great voice channels, great community as well. So jump in and be a part of it. As for the stacks, let's go. He's a legend. Our Stacks video is brought to you every single week by rotogrinders.com. You can use uh, the link down below. It's going to be in the pinned comment and in the description. Just click show more. Uh, you get links to that with a discounted membership for a five day, the monthly, uh, the seasonal. If you just want the NFL, if that's all the daily fantasy you play, you have the opportunity to sign up for those. And with golf and basketball, uh, golf still going and basketball coming and MLB still there. You can sign up for the combo package, which includes access to basically every sport, NFL, MLB, NBA, NHL, PGA, CFB, CBB, SOC, MMA, eSports, WNBA, tennis, AFL, and EL. <gasps> That's really the best deal in sight. Go check it out. Go support the people that support us. And taking a look over at the Smiz Gang Listener League, we are right now over half full, $10 entry fee, three max, $35,000 in the prize pool. Absolutely no rig. Get in there and compete against some of the other members in this community and try and take down the big prize. We shout out all of the people that are in the top 10 on the recap video on the second channel every Monday. So go check both of those things out. Our first stack of the week. Guess what? He was on the cover. It's no real surprise. It's Patrick Mahomes. Guess what? He's really good at football. Really high floor, really high ceiling, touchdown expectation pretty much every game that he plays. One of the highest totals on the slate uh, with the Chiefs going up against the Chargers in Kansas City. Um, and yes, there are a lot of guys who can catch a touchdown. We saw Robinson bring one in uh, this week. We saw, uh, you know, Mahomes throw one to Pringle. He popped open a can as well, which allowed a ton of of fantasy points, right? So great opportunity here and kind of taking a look at the guys that he can use with him, obviously. Tyreek Hill, uh, why did I go to flex? You can use Denard Robinson if you think that he's gonna get enough targets, but he's a little bit thin, only getting four of them and two of them in the first game. Pringle, the other one, really just two targets a game. Realistically speaking, it's Tyreek, it's uh, Miko Hardman who has basically out snapped and out route run everybody else on that team uh, that is not named Tyreek Hill and Travis Kelsey. And the other one, clearly my favorite target on the team on a weekend, week out basis, Travis Kelsey. Now, I'm going to hear this, I know, because I already heard it from Twitch chat. What about Derwin James? He's going to be out there and people might be afraid of him. I mean, matchups are fine and matchups are matchups, but no matter what projection system you're using, matchups are already baked into uh, whatever that, player is going to be right so like no matter what that player is projected at you're already looking at them with that matchup baked into the projection so if you're now double weighting that that's not exactly how you want to handle things and you can take a look over at their projections list over here on roto grinders my best buys comes out every thursday 
uh, after I record this video, I'm going to be sending over uh, my above the fold Best Buys. They will be integrated into the lineup HQ over here. Uh, and we're going to go through and build some stacks here. Go to our team player groups, create player groups. First one clearly was going to be Mahomes. Uh, and I'm going to build my double stacks through this one. I'm going to make sure that I use two of those players from this double stack. Not going to use McKinnon. Not going to use Clyde edwards Lair. We've talked about him already this week. Fortson, Kelsey going to stay in there. I might allow uh, Robinson, probably not going to allow Pringle, not going to allow him. I'm going to keep it pretty tight. And I might boost uh, Kelsey and Hill to be the most, like that every one of my stacks that has Mahomes has to have one of these guys. And we're also going to bring it back with somebody on the opposing team. Our second stack of the week is Matthew Stafford and the Los Angeles Rams going up against Tampa Bay, who has historically, the last year and a half since they've built this team and this defense, um, built it around funneling you to throw the football. They want you to throw the football. They're not going to let you run it. Vita Vea is outstanding. Dominican Sue, great linebackers as well with David and everybody else. Uh, they just don't let you run. So you have to throw more. Now, the running back situation, we're going to monitor that throughout the week, but expect less carries and more targets for whoever the running backs are this week. Uh, just based on the way that Tampa Bay forces you to run your offense. And then you also have a situation where um, we're going to get in Cooper Cup's been really good. We're going to try and get in Bobby Trees. We're going to probably use Jefferson in our stacks. Probably not going to use Jackson. Probably going to use Higby in our stacks as well. So going back over here, uh, that's going to force us to use this Stafford stack. Going to not include the running backs in my stacks. We'll make a decision of whether or not we're going to force them to not be there. Possibly a different story. I'm going to keep this pretty tight with these four guys. Uh, and then you're going to have to take a look at where these guys are going to be played. You can see that this is going to be a very popular group uh, with Woods projected at 12.4, Cup projected at 17.8, and Higby already almost uh, at 14% projecting right around there. Kirk Cousins is my third player that I wanted to discuss here in this uh, segment. First six weeks are very, very friendly for Kirk Cousins. Going up against Seattle in this spot, good total, great offensive environment. Seattle has not been very good against stopping anybody on the pass. Uh, and we know pretty much where the ball is going when Kirk Cousins is throwing it. Now you have a efficient passer who is completing a lot of touchdowns. You also are going to get a little bit of leverage with this stack considering that Cousins typically uh, is going to be underplayed because so many people want to be on Dalvin Cook. And he's a great play, but he's not somebody that I'm going to use in my double stacks uh, because I'm going to try and leverage the field with him. Now, look, if he doesn't play and Alexander Madison is in, this is drastically going to change. You have to monitor that injury as the week goes on. Uh, I am probably not going to include Conklin in my group, but like we can for argument's sake. I am going to focus mostly on the trio of wide receivers. Uh, if I do include Conklin just for leverage purposes in case he wanders into the end zone and catches like three balls where he'd be a good leverage play over the field, I tend to stick to higher price tight ends um, and limit my tight end field this week. So we'll do what we do, but... That's a decision for you to make over the weekend. KJ Osborne going to be extremely popular, but look at Justin Jefferson and Adam Thielen's projections here. 4% and 2.1% for both of these guys who are high volume, high ceiling uh, pass catchers in a very positive game script for them. So great stacks there and double stacks with an easy bring back as well on Seattle, no matter who you're going to be using. Justin Herbert, my other play at quarterback, he's fairly priced. Like it looks really cheap when you compare him to the... Um, other quarterbacks who are priced for more, like like you know Kyler's well above eight thousand. He's eighty two hundred, eighty three hundred. Mahomes is extremely expensive as well. Uh, so now having like Justin Herbert at sixty five looks like he's a massive deal. But like when you look at his projection, where he ranks in projection and where he ranks in most expensive quarterback, he's kind of in line. Like he's like the seventh projected quarterback in the week, and he's like seventh or eighth in salary. So it's a fair price, but you get such a discount off of those. Higher price guys, considering the matchup with Kansas City, who both times that he played them last season surpassed the 300-yard bonus. Uh, he has surpassed the 300-yard bonus on DraftKings both times this season so far. And he's been really inefficient in terms of touchdowns, but that's not his fault. He's thrown like 
14 of them in the first two games, but 12 of them have gotten called back. Please don't fact check that number, okay? Just realize that like he had a Jared Cook one called back, he had an Allen one called back, he had a Parham one called back just last week alone for like a whole slew of different penalties. Now, yeah, you could say, well, the, pen the pass wouldn't have happened if it wasn't for the penalty. The reality is, is that as much as he's throwing the football, for as many attempts and as many yards as he's throwing the football, uh, the expected touchdowns is way higher than two. So getting Herbert stacks into your lineups this week is going to be something that I believe a lot of people are going to do. One, because he's way cheaper uh, than Patrick Mahomes, but gets you exposure to that game. I am going to leave Austin Eckler in my pass group there because uh, I believe that he's going to end the season, let's say, uh, he's not going to have zero like he did in week one. He's probably not going to get nine targets every week like he did last week against Dallas. But like you're talking about a player who's going to get 17 plus percentage of, of the target market share. And that's really what I'm looking for is to soak up a lot of the targets that are coming from that quarterback. If you want to leave one of the deep threats in there, go ahead, uh, like Guyton or whatever, or Palmer, that's fine. Uh, but I'm going to really be focusing on tightening these up into like Eckler, Cook, Allen, Williams, trying to get two of those guys in every stack and either bring it back with one and I might allow two Kansas City players as bringbacks and we'll find some value in other places. My last stack of the week. Now you can hold your nose on this one and who knows, week three streaming quarterbacks have never failed before. They failed a lot. Uh, week three has always been a big trap week. What can we do about it? But Daniel Jones... Looks like he's in way too good of a spot after performing exceptionally well against two really tough defenses in weeks one and two with Denver and Washington. Now we're getting an expanded usage in the running game, six rushing attempts in week one, nine in week two, and we have targets that we can stack him with. And at only 5,800, a double stack and a bring back with somebody on Atlanta. Again, a very uh, small amount of players that you're going to want to use on Atlanta, which makes the bring back player very easy. Whether you're going to pay down and try and get Mike Davis is fine. He's he's out snapping Cordero Patterson, who has been the flashier uh, scoring more touchdowns player on Atlanta. But in terms of like snap percentage and usage, uh, Mike Davis has been doubling him up in terms of both of those categories. So if you're looking for that as a bring back play or Pitts, who has run the second most routes in the league at tight end or Calvin Ridley, who is great and just has not had a spike week yet, all great plays on the bring back. And then kind of looking at the players that we want for Jones in his building group, Saquon Barkley ran like 40% of routes on his dropbacks in week two. So really good routes there. Probably not going to use them in a stack. Am going to have exposure to Saquon Barkley. Going to force double stacks because that's what I want to do. Monitor Evan Ingram and his availability this weekend. If he is available, don't want Rudolph. Uh, don't want Caden Smith. Shepard has been outstanding. And for him to project at 1.7% against the team that led the league in terms of yardage to slot receivers last year, by a 300-yard margin over the second team, the Cleveland Browns. Uh, this matchup is absolutely outstanding for Sterling Shepard. And if that's his percentage in tournaments, that is uh, egregiously low. Uh, and then you look at the other pass catchers as well. Very low percentages there. So an easy stack and very easy and uh, possibly profitable versus percentage play at those positions. Go check out Roto Grinders in their lineup HQ. Go give them a shot if you haven't already. Very easy to build lineups using their lineup builder, uh, especially for somebody who's new to using one. Thank you guys for watching, and I'll catch you later. Bye. He's a legend.